Welcome back in our discussion of Excel and financial functions. This time we're going to see how we can figure out a loan schedule. So we're going to do a loan and see how that works. Right? Every time we do a loan, we go to the bank, they create an amortization table. And an amortization table is just something that's fancy that tells us how much principal we pay on, our, on each payment and how much interest we have on each payment. So if you remember from the last video, we figured out that we can't save $300,000 in 18 months, that that's just not going to work for us. So we're going to go to the bank and we're going to borrow it. So continuing on with our investment workbook, I want you to go to the loan schedule page or sheet and you can scroll down and you can see how this is set up. We have three sections. We have the top section which is the loan schedule where we're going to calculate what is our quarterly payment. You notice it's quarterly now, not monthly. And then in this next section is called the amortization schedule and this is where we're going to calculate how much money we still owe the bank and how much interest and in how much principal is each payment that we make. And then down here at the bottom is kind of a recap area where we're going to be calculating how much interest and in principal that we pay for each year. So we'll be using some different functions this time in addition to those that we've already learned. The new functions that we're going to be using are called I payment or IPMT. That sounds like an interest payment to me. And that is the amount of interest that we pay. And then we have the P payment, which is the principal amount, how much principal is that payment paid. And then we have the two cumulative ones called cumul CUM, P-R-I-N-C, cumulative principal, and CUM IPMT, which is cumulative interest. So those will be the functions that we use in this round. Okay, let's get started. So if you remember, I needed to have $300,000. So we're going to borrow $300,000. Um, the bank says that we can have it for 8.5%. It's not a very good rate. How many quarters are there in a year? Ah, yes, four. That's correct. And we have to figure out the rate per quarter. So it's just like a monthly rate, except that we divide it by a different number. So we say equals our annual rate divided by how many payments we're going to make a year or how many quarters in a year. And our length of our time, we're going to have a, have a loan for five years. Oh, how many quarters is that? Well, I don't have everything to know to, to do a function, so don't let this trick you. Okay? How many quarters are there in five years? Well, that's a simple formula. It's just equals the number of payments we're going to make in a year times the number of years. So that's 20. Now I have the information I need to calculate my, pay my payment using a function. So insert your function and we're going to calculate a payment. Alright, let's look across here. Rate, 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 rate. Is it 8.5? No, that's my annual rate and I want to know what my quarterly payment is. So my quarterly rate, the N per, that's the total number of payments for my loan so that's got to be t this number here, 20. The present value, that's the amount of money that I'm borrowing. And, oh, I don't have a, f a future value on here. So I leave that blank and I say, okay. So that tells me that my quarterly payment is $18,569. So now I want to know how much of that $18,000 is interest and principal over the course of my loan. So that's why we fill out an amortization table. So we're going to scroll down just a little bit 
and we're going to come down here. All right, the remaining principle, this is the cool thing about this. It looks like it's going to take us a long time, but watch this. If you do these simple, I think it's about seven steps total, you can have this done. So you probably want to write these down somewhere or come back to the video and do it again a couple times. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to say, how much money do I owe the bank? Well, duh, it's $300,000. So I say equals, and I come over here and I say $300,000. Now, why do I do it that way? I knew you knew that answer because the answer is if I decided to, to borrow $200,000, but if I put just typed to 300 here in remaining principal, my amortization schedule would not get updated properly. So that's why we use the different things that we're going to be using as we do our amortization schedule. We're going to be using um, relative cell references and absolute cell references. Now I know we've done some of that before already in some of our formulas, so we're going to continue on with those with that mindset. All right. So, $300,000. Well, how much is that interest? Well, remember, I mentioned earlier that, <clears throat> that we were going to use a function called IPMT. So let's insert that. And that's simply, you see the, what it tells us here, returns the interest payment for a given period of an investment based on periodic constant payments and a constant interest rate. That's why this works. All right. We'll just come over here a little bit. Now, here's where it gets tricky because we're going to be copying this through other places, right? So we don't have to enter this every single time because we are a very efficient employee and student. So, when we're creating the amortization table, the things that are up in the top section will always be in absolute cell reference. The things that are in the bottom section are the information that we take directly from the amortization schedule section. That's going to be a relative cell reference. Okay? So if it comes, so one more time. If the information comes from where we're calculating the initial payment, those things are an absolute cell reference. If it comes from where we're calculating the amortization schedule, then that means it is a relative cell reference because we want it to change each time when we do that. All right, here we go. You ready? What's my rate? 8.5? No. Quarterly rate. It's right here and make it an absolute cell reference. Now you remember that's just when we put the dollar signs in front of each thing. Now if you can't remember how to do that absolute reference cell reference, it should be F4 on your computer. If you're using um, a Mac, it's a little different. You may have to hand type it. Um, some HPs are a little squirrely too, so you just have to figure out what works for your computer. All right. Let's go down to the PER. Now this is new. We haven't looked at this one yet. So the PER is simply the period for which you want to find the interest. And it must be in the range of 1 to the N PER. So that means in this case it has to be a 1 to a 20 because we only have 20 quarters, right? So how do I figure out what that PER is? Ha <laughs> ha! Yes. We come right over here to our amortization schedule and look, it's right there, quarter number one. Now remember, I said if it came from the information came from the amortization schedule that we make that a relative cell reference, so we don't have to do anything else. Now we're going to do our N per, that's our total, we know where that is, that's up here at the top. And because it's at the top, it's going to be an absolute cell reference. Our present value. That's the amount of money that we borrowed. So that's at the top again, isn't it? So that means that's an absolute cell reference. We don't have a future value. And you'll notice we have something different here too. So we have a little scroll bar over here on the right. 
If we scroll down, we have a new item that's called type. Now, if I tell you what the type is, then you're going to enter it. If I don't tell you what the type is, leave it blank. Okay? So I may or may not tell you that. In our case, we're going to leave it blank. All right. Let's see what happens when we say okay. 6375. So, out of our $18,000 payment, 6300 is going to go to interest. All right. Let's do the same thing and let's calculate it for the principal amount of the payment. So we're going to come up here and we're going to insert our function. And remember, that one's called a P payment. So P, P, M, T. Let me say OK. And you're going to see some similarities here. Right? So we have a rate. Remember, that's our quarterly rate. And it comes from the top, so it's an absolute value. The per, that's what quarter we're in, so that's over here. The in per, that's a total number of quarters. And our present value, that's how much money we borrowed again, right? And we're going to make that an absolute value too. And we say OK. And that's $12,000. All right. How do I get the total payment? You're exactly right. It's simple. We say equals our interest plus our principal. Now, here's your check mark. This total payment right here should equal this payment up here. If they don't equal, we've done something that's not quite right. All right. So now we're going to come down here to the second quarter. And this is where it gets a little different. So when we're in our second quarter, what do we have to do that's different? Well, I don't owe $300,000 to the bank anymore, right? Because I made a payment. But how much do I still owe the bank? So we have to calculate that. So we're going to say equals. And we're going to use the number that we had before. So that's our 300. And then what goes next? Hmm. In this case, right, it's principal. So we click on principal. Let me say okay. Now, if my numbers in my interest, principal, and total payment were positive numbers, then you would this calculation here becomes a subtraction. But because it has money is going out, so it's a negative number, that's why it um, we just add it. All right, now check this out. Here's the next step. Go up here to these three items, grab them, use your fill handle, copy it down one. And you'll notice that it automatically changed the amount of our interest, the amount attributed to our principal, and our total payment is still the correct amount. Here's the beautiful step. Grab all four of these. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. Use your fill handle and copy them down here to 20. Now that was very fast, right? But I've got to have this final balance here, so how do I do that? Well, that's easy. I just grab this last, this last one, copy it one more time, and I should have a zero there. So we just completed our, our amortization schedule. And if I click on any particular box, I can see the exact formula that I have in my formula bar. I can see the amount of the payment. I can see my remaining balance that we have. So it is very, very quick. All right, one more thing we're going to work on here. All right, we're going to work on the cumulative. Okay. Now, when we talk about cumulative, I could just come up here and I could say, do a sum of that, right? And then do a sum of that. But 
I could make it easier on myself by using two more simple functions. All right, and that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to calculate how much interest is paid in the first year and how much in, and how much principal is paid in the first year. All right. So let's do the interest first. So insert our function, shift F3 or however you want to do it. And this one is called C U M I P M T. Cumulative interest. Okay? And if you know, if you see the definition, it returns the cumulative interest paid between two periods. All right. Well, this looks familiar, doesn't it? And we've got a little scroll bar over here, too. So let's just start filling in the blanks. All right, scroll up here to our top. And you know what? This is the same way. If it comes from the top where we calculated our first payment, we're going to make it an absolute value or absolute cell reference. Sorry about that, not absolute value. Absolute cell reference. If we take the numbers from the section that we're calculating it from, and this time where we're doing the cumulative area, then that's a relative cell reference. All right, so let's grab our rate per quarter and absolute it. And then we got to go back up to the top here and get that in per, right? 20, absolute value that. Our present value, how much money did we borrow? That's over here. Absolute value it. Now we're to the new things. The start period. Well, what does it say? The start period. The first period in the calculation. Ah, easy peasy, right? It's right here, quarter number one. And because it's down here in the section that we're calculating it in, Remember, we leave it as a relative cell reference. And then our ending period, the last period in the calculation. Well, we just want to know what it is for the first year, so that's only four quarters. So that would be this box here, fourth quarters. And if you notice, we've got that little scrolly again. So we scroll down, and this time the type is a bold. So that means we have to enter something there. So we're going to enter a zero. And really all that just means is, are you paying your payment at the beginning of the month or the end of the month? It's either a zero or a one. So for us, it's a zero. So we say, OK. Now is interesting, huh? A little Texas State alert. Um, all right. So that's our total interest that we paid in the first year. So now let's try and calculate how much principal we paid in the first year. So we're going to insert our, our functions again. And this one, you remember, was the cumulative principal. So C-U-M-P-R-I-N-C. -C. And it's going to look very similar, right? the rate, the input, and the present value. So let's go get them. They're up here at the top, remember? There's our rate, absolute value, our input, absolute value, our present value, and now we're down to that start period again. So it's the first period. It's just like we did in the last one. There's our start period, our end period, and we've got to put that zero in there. So that tells us we've paid $50,000 in principal. Now, because of the way that we did this, we can now copy it. So why don't we grab both of these cells, go down to our fill handle, and copy them across. So you can see as over time, our interest payment went down while our principal payment went up. What do you think we want to do here in this total? Exactly right, we can do a sum. So because there are more than two items, we're going to use our auto sum. So we just come up here on our home, page, our home tab and say auto sum, and it automatically thinks for us and grabs the stuff that's across from it. And you can either click on auto sum again or you can just drag it down. And you'll notice this is the other important check figure is that 
the total amount of principal that we paid over the course of our t of our five years should equal the amount that we borrowed. And if it does, you just successfully completed your amortization schedule. So good job. I'll see you in the next video.